Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to SGN. I'm John Krasinski, and boy, just when I thought being five episodes in, we were really hitting our stride and pretty much immune to any semblance of criticism, along comes the internet and says, hi, remember me? So without further ado, it's time for us once again to get straight to the notes. And at first, the criticism came in merely at the level of a good schoolyard ribbing through tweets like this one from David Harris, who writes, I'm a big, big fan of some good news, though you're spinning the globe the wrong direction in your opening. Or this one from Elliot M. John Krasinski, I love this show. Wondering, in addition to the awesomeness, if you could spin the globe in the proper direction for the opening. Counterclockwise, looking down. But then things quickly escalated to passive-aggressive when Greg wrote, did the astronauts happen to mention that you're spinning the globe the wrong way? <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Well, that ignited Elliot M to fire shot number two with the globe, the globe, please just spin it the other way. That's all that stands between SGN and perfection. But the levy finally broke when Melanie from Northwestern North Carolina wrote, I can't stand it anymore. The fate of our world is resting in your hands. Correct the rotational spin of the globe in the opening credits of SGN. Well, though the bluster was more than slightly hurtful, the message was received loud and clear. The problem was, how do I fix it? <laughs> Lucky for me, my deepest fears of the internet conspiring against me came true, as my two seemingly greatest enemies finally came together. The day science teamed up with fan art. I'm John Krasinski. I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. This is SGN. Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to SGN. I'm John Krasinski, and now that our opening is not only accurately portraying science, but also my very own personal dance moves, it's time for some good news. And heading into week six, the world had certainly found its stride, as good news could be found everywhere. In Troutman, North Carolina, lives one of the biggest Jeep fans of all time. His name is Caleb, and he just turned eight this week. Not wanting quarantine to ruin his birthday, his mother simply posted on a message board to see if anyone wanted to help make her son's day a special one. Well, she got a few responses. We had a great turnout today, and we ended up with 310 Jeeps. Great outpouring of support for a special kid. This is the best birthday present ever. Speaking of birthdays, last week we covered the incredible story of Captain Tom Moore, who single-handedly has now raised over 36 million pounds for NHS charities. The even more incredible story? He turned 100 this week. And, well, he got the birthday wishes that a hero deserves. In Hertfordshire, England, this family found out the Olympics were canceled. Their response? Nah. Once you get on, just shuffle back. That's it. <laughs> In Albany, California, these two little girls had the simple yet game-changing idea of simply going out into the street and shouting compliments at people. Sadly, no video footage exists so we here at SGN had to make our first dramatic recreation. Hey, your shirt matches your dog. I like that about you. They could also be heard yelling this. I don't know if you have hair under that hat, but if you do, I'll bet it's beautiful. And perhaps my very favorite compliment was this. Your dog's face is almost as cute as my face when I was a baby. In Watertown, Massachusetts, after 61 years of being married, one 88-year-old man didn't take kindly to the idea that he wasn't allowed to see his bride in her nursing home. The only problem was, her room was on the third floor. When he got up top there, you know, they kind of put their hands on the screen of the window. At that point, I teared up. I asked my, my wife, how much do you love me? And she said, more than you know. In New York City, outside hospitals, police and fire departments have applauded their healthcare heroes every single night at 7 p.m. 
Well, this week, one FDNY firefighter decided to take his gratitude to a whole new level. having absolutely nothing to do with anything, but quite possibly the best news story of the year, I'm finally an action figure. And it's time once again for a check on the weather. Ryan, how's it looking out there? Looks, uh, looks pretty good. Thanks, Ryan. Well, this week, spring has finally sprung, bringing once again the season of beauty, the season of new beginnings, and the season of graduations. That's right, the big days of celebrating one of young men and women's true rites of passage is upon us. But due to the current bizarre circumstances, graduation ceremonies all over the world have been canceled. Well, that wasn't gonna stop the world from still trying. But let's be honest with ourselves. No matter how positive we stay, no matter how hard we try, we all know there's only one way to truly commemorate this momentous occasion. And that is by having a graduation. So I just thought, let's do it. Class of 2020, what is up? You thought you weren't gonna have a graduation this year? You're crazy. Is that John? <laughs> yeah, oh, this is me. Yes, get that hat on, do it. I've got to. All right, class of 2020, let's roll call. What is your name? Where are you from? Shout it out. Ashley Hill, Brigham Young University. My name is Nagin, University of Buff. Nice. I'm Scott Johns, I'm graduating from Northwestern University. I'm Emily Hitchcock, I'm graduating from Soviet UMass. I think you might be in the running for a cutest graduate. No, 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 Emma, the kindergartner. <laughs> Class of 2020, it's time. The SGN graduation starts right now, and we're gonna kick it off just like every other graduation with our class speakers. Hit it! To my fellow graduates and peers. Not watching from the bleachers on our field, but rather watching from behind a screen. Today, we might not have a grand stage to walk across to celebrate this moment, but we will be walking through history. Congratulations, we made it. It is my honor to represent the class of 2020 as your valedictorian. Let's pretend that I look like this while I'm talking. Tony Stark once said that part of the journey is the end. Never did we expect the ending of our high school and collegiate careers to end with us in our living rooms. These last three months that were supposed to be the best three months of our school careers have just been ripped away from us. But the thing about crises is that it brings out the very best in humanity. This is something that really unites us. I've seen many of you all in the class of 2020 lead mutual aid collectives to help underserved communities affected by COVID-19. It is more important now than ever to show the world what we can accomplish. And it's a time of reflection, a time to reevaluate and decide what kind of person you want to be in the world. In my experience, the strongest people are always those that have experienced the worst, but have come out on top anyway. It's our thoughts, our feelings, our actions that make up who we are. And I implore you all to never forget that. The class of 2020 has a very unique opportunity to be able to lead by example. We have the resilience to overcome any setback or obstacle that comes our way. We did it. Despite everything that's happening, 
Can nobody take our pride? Can nobody hold us down? We are stronger together, and together there is nothing we cannot do. Here's to the class of 2020. You earned this. Y'all give me hope in humanity and that we can overcome this together. Congratulations. Peace. Turn those tassels, baby. We did it. I love you guys. Yes, that was incredible. And I'll be honest, that is way better than any other class speaker I've seen. And I've seen two. <laughs> so that was amazing. Thank you all for that. Thank you to everyone who participated, every one of our class speakers. That was incredible. All right, I got to keep moving this thing along here. Now, hold on. I was trying to grad out with you guys, but it's time for me to get official. Okay, I got to MC this thing. All right, so let me check my notes. I'm pretty sure it is. Yep. It is. It's time. Class of 2020, get ready to meet your commencement speakers. But, gotta warn you, we're gonna do it a little bit differently here at the SGN graduation because last year I gave a commencement speech of my own and I was absolutely terrified. So, not wanting to put anybody else in that situation, I came up with another idea. This week, I reached out to all of you and asked you to send me a question that you would love to ask your commencement speaker. And a whole lot of you did. The result? How about we don't have a commencement speech? We have a commencement conversation. Ben! John, how are you? I, I felt like we had to highlight you. You're such an incredibly intelligent kid, an ambitious kid, a, a, a positive kid. And so that's all the things we need on this show and in life. Thank you, John. I really appreciate that. I wanted to bring someone who has inspired me my whole life to answer the question for you. Oh my God. Maybe you can ask the question to him. Hi, Ben. Oh my Hi, goodness. Ben. How are you? <laughs> Your wish is my command. What can I do for you? Hello. Hi. Hi, Cleet. <laughs> yes. It is so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm such a big fan. <laughs> oh my God. I'm such a big fan of yours. Are you kidding me? I've been doing a deep dive to you because I saw your tweet and I've been learning all about you. Oh my God, you are one of the most impressive people I know, let alone someone being so young. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know if you know this person. She's a huge inspiration to me. And this is, I don't know if you know Malala. Oh my God. I... <laughs> Hi. Oh my God. Hi. Hi, how are you? I'm how good. How are you? I'm such a big fan. Oh my God. I'm good. Thank you. Very nice to see you. I actually wrote a paper about you in ninth grade. Oh, thank you. What was that about? Kid. It was like a paper about who inspires you and why. And I chose you because thank like, you. Like, so you. Thank you. Amanda. Oh my God. Hi. It is so nice to meet you. I uh, have heard all about you and it is blowing my mind. So you're, first of all, you're graduating from Harvard, which yes. you know, uh, achieve something one day, that would be great. Um, <laughs> you've been named the first youth poet laureate in the country's history? Yes, that is correct. Here's the deal. I'm not smart enough to answer your question, but I do know someone who is. She's an inspiration of mine, and I hope an inspiration of yours. I don't know if you know this person. Amanda! Oh my God! <laughs> John! I love that outfit. So nice to meet you. So nice to meet you. Congratulations, you're graduating today. I didn't know if you knew. By the way, this is your diploma. Oh my gosh, thank you. Um, it is so nice to meet you, man. Thank you for submitting a great question. And I do have someone that I think can answer your question very well and bring some enlightenment to your life. This is a friend of mine. Oh my gosh, John. Hey, Stepper. man. <laughs> hey, John, how are you doing? It's the three Johns. It's the John John. Man, we're going to swap a lot of stories when we go on the road together as the three Johns. <laughs> Stephen, Ben had a really profound question that I thought would inspire so many people watching this show. So he's going to ask it to you. Take it away, Ben. Yeah. Um, how do you still follow your dreams when it uh, feels like the world isn't so supportive of them? My question was, if you can tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Um, well, now that I'm asking it to you, the question was, um, think about a time in your life that felt like a low point at the moment, but actually changed everything for you. Oh, I so love that question. It feels like therapy. <laughs> My question uh, as I'm a graduate is, mm -hmm. now what? <laughs> now what? Yeah. Now what? Let me tell you something. That is the question. 
Well, you know, dreams are a great test because a dream is going to test your resolve. And you're going to know a dream from a, uh, a, a pipe dream. You're going to know a dream from uh, just sort of a casual brush with something that got you excited and then it evaporates. A real dream is something that not only hangs on to you, but you will hang on to it. And it will power you through every obstacle that people and environment will throw against you. Because if we are in service of our dreams versus our dreams being in service to us, it becomes something greater and it allows us to be game and it allows us to get over our fear and to go forward no matter what obstacles are thrown in our path. Regarding what I would say to my uh, younger self, I would just tell myself that leave in your voice, continue speaking and don't give up. And society tries to define us and tries to limit us. So I would say, just do not listen to that, ignore all of that and believe in yourself and continue what you strongly believe in and what you want to do. Thank you so much. Yes, that's such an amazing advice. Thank you. <laughs> there have been several times in my life, Amanda, when things didn't go the way I wanted. This is actually the most uh, uh, influential in my life. It was the most impactful because it was the first time. I was 22. I got this big job working in television as an anchor on the news in Baltimore. And I was placed with um, uh, an older gentleman who didn't want me to be there. Mm. But I didn't know that. I came in for the fall of 76. By April 1st, 1977, I'm being called in by the bosses and told that I am no longer going to be needed on the news. I thought it was an April Fool's joke. Mm. Anyway, I get demoted. I am humiliated. I am embarrassed. I know that they are waiting to fire me. What they did was, instead of firing me, put me on the local talk show. Mm. And the day I did my first talk show, I felt like I had come home to myself. I believe that failure is an opportunity to move yourself in a different direction. It gets better because you learn the lessons from the first time. The person on Mr. Krasinski's show before you, their question was answered by Oprah. <laughs> wow. So I think it's clear Sometimes in life, you're going to get the short end of the stick. You're about to enter into a world where, you know, no one's grading you. There's none of those things that are going to be going on. Stop completing things and start living them. Wow. One of the things this moment is teaching us is, is that truly anything is possible. It will be imagination and innovation that gets us all to the other side. I know this is the time of huge loss but it's also a chance to dream big about our futures together. <clears throat> and your generation has something important to say about making that a better future for all of us. Malala, I thought maybe you could also talk to McLeet because I don't think many people know you're, you don't get to graduate either. No, I don't. <laughs> Unfortunately, 2020 wasn't our year. Yeah. And uh, a lot of students, uh, you know, their graduation ceremonies are not happening. But we are not going to give up. We're going to celebrate it in any way possible. I agree. Or, or, or on an internet show. You can also <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> One of my greatest poet mentor friends, a woman who became a mother sister to me, Maya Angelou, used to say to me all the time, baby, God put a rainbow in the clouds. And this is true, Amanda. There have been many times when you're on the ground and you're going to fly somewhere. This is my favorite moment in life that when it's really dark and dreary on the ground and then you get in the plane and within three minutes you shoot above the clouds and you see the sun was always there. Amanda, it's your average Friday when Oprah is quoting Maya Angelou and telling you that there's the sun is still shining up above the clouds. Get out of here. How, other than getting out there and going for it, like what now? <laughs> what did you just say? Other than what? Getting out there and going for it. Oh my God, John, you just answered your own question. You know, Ben, you know, when you do something that's really personal to you, it, it, it means so much more than, than other things you do that are, that are, that are in-betweeners, you know? When you finally hit on something that really means something to you, uh, uh, that's something that stays with you the rest of your life. What would you say to like young girls who 
are missing out their graduation ceremonies or need a positive message to aspire for their dreams? I'll say it's all about perspective. Like, even though we don't get to graduate, but we're still safe. And that's not something everyone can say out in the world, you know? You have no idea what's about to come at you. And man, isn't that the beautiful part of it? The one piece of advice I would give you is embrace that. You are now looking upon the horizon, the roads forking, and you think to yourself, this is a world filled with possibility. And I am steeled and ready for the challenge that lay before me. Now what? I am the captain of my own ship and I will write this story. I can't wait to read your work, to see your work, to feel your work, to know that the dream that your ancestors held for you, that you now carry that dream forward in such a way that you, 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 you wear the crown that they made for you. Thank you. Learn from each opportunity that you have. Let no opportunity be too small for your time and let no opportunity be too big for your possibilities. Thank you guys both for doing this. I'm so glad you guys got to meet. This is your year, don't worry. Okay, thank you so thank much. much. Thank you. Bye guys. Thank you, Stephen. It means a lot. Y'all's March work. on, march <laughs> on. I've got a good feeling about you, friend. You're gonna do well. Happy graduation! Happy graduation! <laughs> Woo. Yeah. Woo. <laughs> Class of 2020 by the power vested in me by no one. Congratulations. You have officially graduated. There you go. Just like that, we did it! Thank you to everyone who made SGN graduation so very special. That'll do it for this episode of SGN. I'm John Krasinski, reminding you that no matter how hard things get, there is always good in the world. And how do I know that? Because class of 2020, today, you are the good in the world. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Today, we burst into a new world around the globe. We might not be wearing a robe, but this is our ode, our moment. So let's own it, let's smile, because we didn't mount this milestone alone. This took a village. We are the image only ever seen in our ancestors' wildest dreams. This is a rite of passage but more so a passage of lights. We're the bright torch that never stops burning, never quits learning. This night too shall pass. And when it does, this 2020 class won't just navigate a new normal. Together, we'll build a better one. We come to this commencement to search no more. We are the good news that we've been looking for, demonstrating that every desk holds a dawn disguised within it. Today, we don't burst into a new world. We begin it.